Hey guys, what you got there? Oh, got milk. So Do you have to run to the milk? you have to run to the grocery store real quick? Yeah. <laughs> gotta get some chocolate milk. Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. I'm walking out to the greenhouse. Toby and Joe, that's our, our my friend's kids are here. Uh, they just went out to the barn because they started to make chocolate milk, but there wasn't enough milk in the house for everyone. My kids will complain sometimes. They're like, we're out of milk. I'm like, we're literally never out of milk. <laughs> I will tell you one time, I did, I was in the middle of making a recipe. This was back in Arkansas, so I just had goats at the time. But I was in the middle of making a recipe and I needed milk and I didn't have any. And it was like the middle of the afternoon. So obviously it was really too early to officially milk, but I straight up did go out and find the closest goat with a full udder. <laughs> I'd be like, hey goat, come here, give her a little grain. Get down there and milk out the cup of milk that I needed. I was like, this is the most <laughs> farm thing I think I've ever done. So it is a beautiful weekend in the Midlands of South Carolina. Very thoroughly springish. We are going to freeze again this week, so I've held off planting anything outside, though I've really, really wanted to. These warm, springy, pollen-y days where everything is blooming, I just want to plant the garden so badly. Oh, look at these asparagus spears. They're huge. Look at that. There's a couple more that are really big. Now, if you read about asparagus, everybody says don't harvest it much until the third year. However, I'll explain about the asparagus, but I was about to sit down and look at this. This is the pollen. My car, I have a black car, and it is so yellow. I just, I'm... There's just no hope in keeping it clean. Can y'all see how much pollen is here? So with asparagus, it's said not to harvest much until the third year. However, it depends on how you're planting. So I have asparagus plants growing all over my farm. It grows like a weed here because it goes to seed and then the birds spread the seed. And when they come up the first year, they're like tiny little things. I'll see if I can find one. It won't be hard. I'll just have to walk around. Um, and obviously you can't really harvest from those or else the plants don't really take root. However, we commonly plant asparagus from crowns. And when you buy asparagus crowns, which is basically bare root asparagus plants, just the root systems, um, those are typically second year crowns. So technically, if you're planting from crowns, you should be able to start harvesting your asparagus pretty well on the second year. Um, this is my third year for these. The rule that I've found that I think is a really good guideline to go off of is to harvest until, like when the asparagus first starts coming up, it's gonna be a lot larger. So I showed you those ones. I mean, they're like, they're like as thick around as like a quarter. But I saw a reference that said, harvest them until they get to be pencil sized and then stop. Like when they get as thin as like just a regular pencil, then go ahead and let them grow. Because you, you basically have to, at some point let the plant reproduce because all plants are just trying to reproduce they're producing fruit they're producing flowers with the case of asparagus spears those are the little the plants just emerging and so you can harvest them to a certain point but at some point if you keep harvesting them they're gonna run out of energy and stop trying to grow so pencil size asparagus is like your cue to quit harvesting. And that means if you planted crowns last year and you have some like really large asparagus stalks coming up this year, you can go ahead and harvest those. But when they are consistently coming up and they're real thin, then let them go ahead and grow. So I've been going through the cottage garden. Look at all these, these are all little zinnias. Um, I've got lots of things that are coming back. There's a ton of zinnias here. I'm just gonna leave everything like that that's coming up. Look, here's some baby asparaguses. I can show you. So this is the plant, but look here. See this tiny one? So this is growing from seeds that probably were spread last year. Um, and as you can see, I've got a lot of them. But here, like this, I mean, I've got multiple asparagus spheres coming up and these are really tiny, but that's like a pretty good size one. Here's a pretty good size one. These are all just volunteers. They're growing from seeds that got spread by birds. A weed is simply a plant growing where you don't want it. 
So technically, those we those are asparagus weeds. I guess I kind of do want them, so maybe they're not weeds. Maybe they're just asparagus growing where it wants. I'm really nervous about this freeze coming this week because it's been so warm that so many things are coming up and just budding and blooming everywhere. These are cannas. I've got like lots of cannas popping up everywhere and pollen look at the pollen so it started raining um yesterday and it was like a yellow stream like all the pollen that was washing down hey, there's so much pollen everywhere that when the wind blows it's like this yellow cloud just flying through the air I have to turn my fans off in here so you guys can hear me. Um, I'm at the point now with the greenhouse that with these sunny days, having to turn the fans on real high and how warm it gets in here, I've got to really stay on top of watering because things dry out super fast. I've been asked a lot about my little sprayer here. Um, I just bought this at Walmart. So I'm often asked about sprayers and nozzles and people say they just don't last very long the ones that they've bought and honestly that's that's kind of my experience of all of the ones that i've ever had um i've had some that cost more money and some that were more affordable and now like this one i think was in the 16 dollars range at walmart i bought it this season i know it looks really impressive if it is still this impressive in another two months then I'll be like, man, this is a unicorn amongst sprayers because my experience of most sprayers is, and it, it, this could be on me. Like, I mean, I'm also really bad about throwing them around, you know, like I'll drop them on the ground and stuff like that. So it could be me. This could be user error. But in my experience, I've yet to find a spray nozzle that is really good for a long time. They typically do like wear down pretty quickly. I wish that I could buy one that would last. I mean, I wouldn't even mind spending more on one that would last a long while, but of all the ones that I've tried, I've yet to like meet my match in a nozzle. So I just buy, at this point, relatively cheapish ones and try to take decent care of them to hopefully get the most time out of them. So right now I'm just doing like a quick spray and then I'll go back and put some water in the bottom water trays. So this last week in the greenhouse, I have been plugging away at my like next phase in seed starting. So I'm, I'm about to show it to you guys, but the way that I start tomatoes is I put a whole lot of seeds in one pot like this. I've done like a tutorial, like official tutorial video in the past. I'm just gonna like touch on this. Um, the reason I do this is honestly, it's just kind of faster, it's more compact. I started it doing this, doing it this way because I used to start my seeds under grow lights in my house and then I would separate them out into their own pots and put them out in the greenhouse and then that would allow me to start them sooner and in the like really small stage when they're first coming up, they're just in my house and I don't have to worry about regulating the temperature in a greenhouse. Now I do this in a greenhouse. So the benefit is, is that you can start a whole lot of seeds in a small space. Like I've got all these tomatoes in this one tray. But now what I have to do is I actually have to take them and separate them um, into individual pots. And it's crazy how fast these things grow once you give them their own space. So obviously like this stage of a bunch of seeds in one pot, it only works for a little while. And then, I mean, eventually they're gonna run out of space and they're gonna get really spindly. Like I'm getting to the point that it's like, okay, you really have to separate these. The other benefit of doing it like this is like if I, let's say I want 10 tomato plants of a certain variety or whatever, if I, fill 10 pots and I put one seed in each pot, um, and let's say I have 80% germination, eight come up and two of those pots now have nothing in them. Uh, so I can then choose to re-sow and then I have two plants that are like behind the other plants. So if I want 10 plants, let's say I'll put 
12 seeds in here, 13 seeds in here. I give it a little bit of margin. And then whatever comes up, I can choose, okay, now I can put my 10 plants in 10 different pots. And it, I guess it's kind of streamlined. I don't know. I feel like it saves time. Maybe not. Maybe I'm just delaying the time. So now I have to fill all the pots and write all the labels and do all the stuff now that I didn't have to do when I started the seeds a couple weeks ago. So I did this two trays right here. Um, I don't know. I separated these out. And they have already grown so much since having their own space. Those guys need some water. They're a little dry. So you can fix so anything like that that uh, doesn't mind having its roots messed with. So I'll do eggplants that way also. Look at that. I bragged on this thing and now it's starting to get squeaky and leaky. Maybe it was just the way I was holding it. Or maybe it's actually leaking. Anyway, I'll do eggplants that way too. Uh, peppers, any sort of onion or allium you can fix so and then separate. Um, the things that don't like that are cucumbers, melons, squash. Um, honestly, with flowers and things, I usually just give them their own cells. The thing with like tomatoes, onions, and peppers is that those are the things that you're typically starting with a little bit of a time crunch. So, like for instance, I'll plant I'll plant flowers for two months, you know, and I can put new seeds in or whatever. But with tomatoes, I'm trying to get these plants started as soon as possible so that they can bear fruit as soon as possible. And so I don't really want to have plants that are weeks behind because I didn't have good germination. So I, I don't know, somebody asked me like, well, can you do that with all of your plants? And I, I think that you probably could push the limits on things that don't mind having their roots disturbed because you're essentially gonna take these tiny plants and tease them apart and replant them. And also like tomatoes especially, they just take off with even just the, I mean, honestly, sometimes I'll just pull the seedlings up. If they've got a tiny bit of roots, they'll be fine when you put them in soil. Now with the bottom water trays, this is when they become pretty non-negotiable for me. When the seedlings are really small, it doesn't really matter because you can just water the soil. They're not drinking that much. Typically it's not that hot, but as it starts to warm up and get really sunny, and then the plants are getting bigger, therefore they're using more water. Those bottom water trays are pretty necessary because that soil can dry out a lot in a day. I can't remember what I did, like showed the last time that I showed how to do this because you know, it's so weird like when I'm making videos, I can even look back on videos from three or four years ago and the way I have done things is kind of adapted over time. Um, so what I used to do is I would take this and I would dump it out and then I would separate the seedlings into different cups. But then I had a pile of soil there that could potentially have seeds in it that haven't yet germinated. Um, and then I don't know what they are because if they go germinate somewhere else, I'm, I can recognize it's a tomato seedling, but I don't know exactly what it is. So what I do now is I'll take the pot and I usually have like a marker or something that I'm working with. And I will use this to kind of go in here and lift the soil up so that I can bring the seedlings out here while maintaining a pretty good bit of roots. All right, I just flung this. Now there's no soil, but there are still roots. And then I use the same marker to make a hole and I plant this really deep. Now with the tomatoes, they'll, they'll benefit from you planting deep because they'll grow roots along their stem. The way tomatoes grow when we're not involved is they're actually very rambly and they ramble along the ground and where the stem lays along the ground, it'll actually root into the ground. So you can plant tomato plants really deep and they'll just grow roots where they're in contact with the soil. Other things, I, I don't know, somebody told me last year that somebody else that they follow did an experiment to see if pepper plants seem to grow stronger and bigger from being transplanted deeply. And they said that they did. I've never really tried to transplant pepper plants very deeply, but I know for tomatoes it's a benefit. Um, and for some things I don't think it necessarily hurts, but it might not make like a difference either way. Anyway, what I do is I'll pull out everything that I want to uh, from here. If there are any excess, I may trim them off, but I leave one with the tag in the original pot that I started them all in. And that way, if more seedlings do indeed come up out of that soil, because like 
seeds can stay in soil for a while. And just because they haven't germinated in the couple weeks that all of the other ones germinated doesn't mean that there are not still seeds in the soil that may still come up. Uh, so at least if I have them in the original pot with a tag, I'll know what they are when they do come up. And I may not need them. I may not want them. But to me, that just seems a little better than just tossing them away. I have a really hard time like getting rid of seedlings. You may have noticed this. This is a variety called Italian Heirloom, which is a really big paste tomato um, that I really like. Now for the last one in here, I usually pull up the last one and then repot it deep into the same pot that I started with. And now I just have to repeat that with the other, I don't know, 30 something cups of different varieties that I have this year. It's more than that. It's more than 30 something. I'm looking, there's a whole tray over there. I think I ended up starting like 40 varieties, which is actually like less than I have done in the past, but it's still a lot. <laughs> So this week is, I guess, a big week. Um, we're starting our farmer's market this week. I mentioned it in a video the other day, and I'm very excited. So if you're local and you would like to come out and hang out with us and check out the farmer's market and support local vendors, it's gonna be Thursday. Um, it's on Lexington Avenue, which is in Batesburg, the Batesburg side of Batesburg, Leesville, South Carolina, um, right in front of our roastery, Beulah Roasting Co. It's going to be on the street there, and we have several we have several vendors already signed up, um, and it's from 3:30 to 7:30, I believe. If you would like to vend or be a, a volunteer, you can sign up for that on the Beulah website. I'll put a link to it. But if you would just like to attend, we would love to have you come. Um, I'm very excited, honestly just a touch nervous like it's not that I anticipate anything being negative about it it's just I always feel nervous whenever we do new things that I want to make sure that we do well you know because people are investing their time and their energy I tend to get a little nervous when it comes to stuff like that because I just I hate disappointing people so I want it to be really good <laughs> but I'm very excited about it I'm thinking about it a lot so the task of separating out the tomatoes is relatively tedious and every year i i like doing it this way i don't like filling all the pots and writing all the tags and in that part of starting seeds and every year that i do it this way and then i have to fill all the pots and write all of the tags after my initial wave of excitement has passed because when it's like seed starting time i'm like rearing to go i could fill a thousand pots on that excitement um but then I end up putting it off because I start all the seeds in a compact way and then separate. And at this point, I'm still very excited, but it's beautiful outside and I want to be outside. And, you know, like, <laughs> I don't know that this is the way that I should be doing it. I feel like I should maybe make more of my early seed starting excitement because now I have to make myself. Like, right now, I am at the point that I'm, like, coming out every day and being like, okay, just do two trays today, you can do two trays tomorrow. And it takes me, plugging away at it like that, it takes me about a week and a half to get all the tomatoes separated out into their pots. Because like today, I also need to start my zinnia seeds and that's what I really wanna do. Cause I'm, I'm kinda over this. <laughs> Isn't that so bad? I do think that maybe that is something that doesn't get talked about enough in the like, gardening and homesteading social media world which I mean I'm I'm here in the middle of it making a job out of it and I love the romance of this dream life I love it I love the garden I am so excited about the garden a lot of the times but in gardening food growing homesteading raising animals whatever aspect of it you want to like hone in and look at cooking food from scratch there is the truth that you're doing oftentimes extremely repetitive tasks, tasks that must be done or else you fail for the season. You know, like if I don't, if I don't separate my tomatoes out and they all get too leggy and then they're not plantable, then then I've missed my window and then I've got to choose, well, do I want to buy plants or do I not want to grow tomatoes? So there's like a, there's something pressing on it time-wise. Uh, and sometimes with doing 
anything like this, you just have to buck up and make yourself do the thing you don't want to do. Um, and though I am extremely excited about gardening and I love it, there are still times that I have to make myself like Jessica, go do the tomatoes, go separate the tomatoes out, go start those seeds, go them in that bed. You have to go harvest that thing. If my scooping's weird, it's because I'm trying not to dislodge my camera. You guys are sitting on soil right now. Anyway, especially if you're a person that deals with attention issues, staying on task like, like I do, um, I highly recommend a little reward system for yourself. Like for me, it was like, hey, you have to separate out, I just did two trays of tomatoes. You have to separate out two trays of tomatoes before you get to plant your zinnia seeds. Like the thing that I am most excited about doing is usually the reward that I let myself have after I do the thing that I'm not very excited about doing. I actually think that this is something that the garden has taught me that I just had not learned as much in other areas of my life because there are some real non-negotiable things whenever living things are like dependent on you and I know that we can like make light of how many houseplants we've killed and we can make light of being forgetful people who like blow off responsibilities and while it stinks to kill plants and I do kill plants and I have made light of killing plants like it gets a lot more serious when it's like goats that you're talking about like there comes a point in gardening and homesteading where you don't get to just like make light of negligence anymore and so for me um I want to be frank with you guys whenever it's something like I am so over dealing with these tomatoes I'm super excited for the garden I cannot wait to eat a tomato don't get me wrong but sometimes it, especially when you're doing things on a very large scale um, there's a lot of tedium in this life there's a lot of monotony there is a lot of showing up when you don't feel like it and while we can spin that in all measure of romantic ways and talk about how much it can grow you and develop your character and all that stuff which is true it can sometimes it also just it doesn't feel great and you just got to suck it up just you know suck it up buttercup that's what i tell myself whenever i'm like i don't want to do that i don't want to <laughs> suck it up y'all look at the pollen on this tray crazy it's just it was just sitting out today in the greenhouse with the door open that's how much pollen I just bought the seed package at like a local feed store um, but it's called the mini zinni mixture and it's a blend of thumbelina button box pumilla and lilliput beehive and semi double flowers so it's all different colors of zinnias and it says it's a container variety so they're all like more small this is why I wanted to um, really mark this because like these I'll probably put more in the raised bed garden than necessarily in with all the other cut flowers though you could cut these um, you know if they're not going to have the long stems and the real big blooms of some of the other varieties I would rather leave these out of that space task done or chipped away at and reward given <laughs> I now have a few more trays of tomatoes and a couple more full of trays of flowers which is good I gotta turn the fans back on in here I turn it off whenever I'm shooting videos in here but it gets really too hot for the plants pretty quickly <sighs> when I come outside and it's the end of winter and it's a sunny day I just want to soak it up. I just want to come outside and stand in the sunshine or lay down in the sunshine. Oh, if I ever go anywhere, if I'm like in the dead of winter, if I go travel somewhere, like last February, we went down to Florida and it was so sunny and I just was like laying in the grass like everywhere I went. I just wanted to lay out in the sun and soak it up. I miss you, sunshine. Well, I hope you guys have had a lovely weekend and that you are getting done with your responsibilities, even the ones you don't necessarily feel like doing. 
what I tell myself often whenever I have all these tedious little tasks that I don't necessarily feel a ton of excitement about is I just remind myself how much I used to hope to get to do these things. Just keep it in perspective. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I bless you. Until next time.